of Taking Over. I am Oled Ed Fries, and I am joined by the one and only, the natural Astrid Bizarro. Astrid, how are you doing today? There you go. I'm doing better today, not that I'm, I'm not fighting Twitter trolls. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had some fun with some people deciding that uh, standing up for women's wrestling is being annoying, if I remember the word correctly. Yeah. All yeah, kinds of fun. There you go. We got our friends in the hot seat podcast joining us. We got our friend Barry Monkey in the in the crowd joining us. Well, that was a decent show, mostly. I'm sure, we'll get to the rest of the mostly after in a little while. It, as I put in the title, did NXT cool off from its heat wave last week? Absolutely, like one thousand percent, they did. Heat wave, heat wave was a hell of a show, and this was a Tuesday. It was it was, it was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. There is yeah, it was not okay. one remarkable moment on this entire show. There are some fun moments, but nothing remarkable on this show. Yeah. Maybe you disagree. Let's see. Oh, God, not women's wrestling. I suppose we have to. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. I know that your tongue is firmly planted in your cheek with that comment. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, yeah, no, um, you know. I was sitting here, like I said, I, I, I watched All In the other night. I reviewed it for the our local establishment channel with Bobby Munson. The women's match was one of my top five favorite matches of the entire night. Like, it really was. It was a really decent mm -hmm. women's match. I wish there had been another one. I could have done without a stadium okay. stampede, a casket match. I'm not calling it a coffin match. Um, <laughs> without the Jack Perry... Funko rules. Yes. Well, the Jack Perry Funko rules pop match, whatever the hell is to FTW title match. Oh, uh, whatever. The, like they had like four matches that were like anything goes, and I'm like, I could have done without four of those. We could have saved some yeah. of those. Division. But all those was a good time. I had some fun with some friends. We had a, we had some laughs. It is what it is. But now we're here to talk about NXT. And the highlight of this show was the women main evented. They were featured throughout the video packages. And we had the start of the NXT Global Invitational for the Heritage Cup. Yep. Uh, or the Heritage Cup Global Invitational, something like that. <laughs> it it's was... way too much words for tournament. NXT Global Heritage Invitational. There you go. Yeah, it's just too many words and none of them are in the right spots. Um, no, but it, like I said, it was it was a good show. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I watched the whole thing. Uh, I didn't take a lot of notes, but I watched the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, might as well start from the beginning. We start right with the schism in the ring after our next our heat wave uh, recap package, which we're not going to go into because we all talked about that last week. What did you think of this match? What did, I want you to go ahead and talk about this because. Your man, Mr. Julius Creed, was <laughs> foremost and frontmost in most of this match. No, I feel like this was a great choice for an opener. 
it was like I knew it was gonna be good, but it was gonna be that good. Um, yeah, I just like I loved when schism comes in, they already have a plan. It's like here, just like they mentioned last week, I just because you have a door in the steel cage doesn't mean it's you know to keep us inside. Is you know, we have other people here as well, so I like how they started with. I feel like they kept you at the edge of your seat, even though you knew that the Queens were going to win anyway, but like the in-between was still like, like nice to watch. Um, yeah. it just, I love watching it. And not, not only that, but then they have Brutus and they're like, this is the power. Let's take him away from the group. So we have the schism followers take away Brutus and Julius is fighting by himself. You know, the door is locked. He's basically doing a handicap match at this point until I, I don't want to say halfway, but it feels like about halfway during the match. Uh, Brutus comes in, he, you know, basically took down everything from the schism followers there. And I like the chemistry they have with, you know, with the die, was just incredible to watch. Um, I think one of the highlights was definitely that Brutus ball towards the end because Julius had both of them on his shoulders as Brutus came in for his Brutus ball. And even that, like, uh, there was a the one uh, armed uh, power bomb from Julius as well. There's just like, I felt like all I heard was holy beep, holy beep, all the whole thing during the end of it. And it was like, I, I loved how like the crowd was so hot for it to begin with and to know that this was the beginning of the show. You know, I loved it. And of course, the Queens won. So they reinstated to NXT now. Yeah, I had a good time with this. I really enjoyed it. Mama Fries, not so much. After about, we're about 8.30 at this point. She's like, when is the good wrestling going to start? And I'm like, we just no, had a really good cake we just had a really good cage match. What are you talking about? She's like, no, it's not anything. And I'm like, oh, okay. I got to have a chat with Mama Fries then. <laughs> Barry Monkey says what I thought Julius was effing brilliant in this match. Yeah. He was fantastic. They gave him a spotlight like nobody else in this match. Mm -hmm. But we have to talk about how great the diet did here because they sold everything perfectly well. They did an amazing job making the creeds look like a million bucks here. Yes, okay. Julius is strong. Yes, he's freakishly strong and he can do all kinds of great things. The ankle lock with the one arm with the one arm power bomb. Fantastic. Love it to death. It's great. Julius is fantastic. But it takes two to tango and those two other guys in that match absolutely killed it. And we know that this might be the last time that we see James Drake and Zach Gibson in NXT. Because we've been saying it for a while, their contracts are expiring in October, and it doesn't sound like they're coming back. They have made it clear they want to explore free agency. Before we get into that, we have a couple new friends that have joined in. Melball, hello! <laughs> we also have Dara Amazing jumping in. Hello, Dara. Thank you for joining us. Um, but no, I absolutely love this tag team match. Brutus ripping... There's something great about ripping a cage door off. It's just oh, always yeah. great to watch. Especially mm -hmm. when it works the right way. Mm -hmm. Like, when, when Kane did it and the chain didn't break, um, it looks really funky. When Mark Henry tries to do it and he grabs the wrong side of the door and doesn't want to come off, it looks funky. But he just grabs it. He looks uber strong, hulks up, goes ahead and brings it into the ring as a weapon. <laughs> like, there's no part of that that doesn't hurt. Like, as... I'm a not an in-ring competitor, but I can't imagine cage matches are fun because of all the hardcore type, type matches, that has to be the one that hurts the most because you can't do anything to a cage to make it comfortable. Yeah. You gimmick tables so that they break easier so it doesn't feel as bad when you go through it. You know, you can make sure with a hardcore match when you're hitting, hitting with weapons, you're not really hitting all that hard most of the time, mm -hmm. so it makes it easier. Can't do that with steel link cage. Like, Chain link steel cage is just another beast. I love it. Don't get me wrong. If I had my choice, I'd go back to blue steel cage. I would go back in a heartbeat to my blue steel cage of my youth. But <laughs> absolutely adore this tag team match. I thought it was great. Creed's get the big win that they needed. Yeah. Puts them back in. And by the way, the Creed's versus D'Angelo family, sure. We've seen we've seen that in bits mm -hmm. before. I'd be down to see that again, especially with both of them as baby faces. But we move on to the next part of the show, and this is where things get really interesting. Mm -hmm. We get the Global Heritage Invitational Introduction, where they go ahead and explain everything. Ashton sent me pictures that I didn't get loaded in just yet, but we'll get them loaded in as the show goes on. Basically, there are eight competitors, and as Barry Monkey says... It is nice that they are going ahead and putting in this global invitation. Constantly <laughs> pretend that England, Scotland, 
and Jersey aren't all the same country. And they mm-hmm. kept saying Jersey as a country, which made me look it up. I'm like, why did you think Jersey's a country? I had no idea that Jersey was a self-governed city state, essentially. Yeah. Of a, it's part of the greater UK area, apparently. Mm-hmm. But I do love that the, these, that like, it, to make it more international, we have three people from Europe. And also, mm-hmm. to make it more inter- international, they made European Charlie Dempsey American. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. We do have our friend CBRS Entertainment joining us. Thank you, Chris Best, for joining us. If you haven't seen it, please go watch the tribute show. Chris Best, OMD, and Carl Carafel did today on Turnbuckle Talk, where they talked all about Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk. So definitely after this, go ahead and give that a watch. It will be my tomorrow morning. I'm going ahead and getting that in there. Um, but we go ahead after we get the inf- inter- introduction to that. We have Tony and Stax sitting backstage with their, co- with their titles, talking to each other. And Carmelo Hayes walks up and plops his title down in front of theirs. And I'm like, ooh, they're going to start something here. And they're like, nope. They're all friends. They're all chit-chatting, yeah. having a little bit of back and forth, talking about, well, who's next for the, for the, for the world champ? Yeah. And overcome the Street Profits. And I was like, ooh. Like <laughs> yeah. Uh, loved seeing the Street Profits here. That was fantastic. Uh, the Street Profits go ahead and they start talking to Carmelo. And it, it, it feels like they're trying to get him for this Bobby Lashley thing. But I really mm. hope they don't. Not yet. I want it to be a little bit longer because I need Carmelo in NXT to talk about him on a weekly basis. But mm. Melo says, you know what? I got this asterisk I got to take care of. So I'll see you all later. I got to go do business. And then it just leaves them with Tony D'Angelo and Sax. And Sax is like, so I hear y'all used to run this place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We did our fair share of running it. And I'm like, no. No, you didn't. Like, to be fair, the Street Profits never ran the NXT Tag Team Division. Because if, for those who are unfamiliar with the NXT Tag Team Division in the times of the Street Profits, this is at the height of DIY, mm-hmm. Viking Raiders... When they were war machines, no, they weren't. What were they? They, they were the Viking Raiders, weren't they? At this no, point? they were war machines to begin with, and a little bit of the Viking, I think. Yeah, they they had another name. I forget. Uh, was it War Raiders? I think was the NXT name that they yeah. got. They mixed mm-hmm. the two together and got War, war, war yeah. Raiders. Yeah. But like the the Street Profits ended up taking the titles by default when everybody else broke up or moved on. So they didn't run NXT like they trying to make us all mm-hmm. believe. It. But I'm sold on this match. Give it to me. Give it to me now. I will take yeah. this match in a heartbeat. Yes, please. So, uh, any thoughts on this promo package? And then, oh, oh, before we get there, then the ladies start fighting as we see yeah. here. <laughs> Dana Brooke and the guys just like the hell. And the probably just go, man, NXT got wild since we left. Yeah. <laughs> That is very true. Oh, and I forgot to mention for the uh, Schism and the Creed's match after uh, Schism, the diet loses, Ava's nowhere to be found at ringside. I know this is story. And likewise, just to like say that she, they said she was disgusted that they lost and that's what she left. Um, but no, uh, I like this part because it just took me back of that Carmella Street Profits connection. I was like, oh my God, make it happen. I love Tony and Sykes having that little bit you know, there with them too as a tag team that's been in through NXT already. And I was like, I wouldn't mind seeing this match sometime soon. And yeah, like you said, the chaos of the ladies. I thought it was funny because I thought the segment was over and I was like, I hear yelling, like, what's going on? I don't see anything. But the girls are just like fighting it off in the back. Or like, I forgot if it was the referees that were like trying to separate them too. And I was like, what was that? It was chaos, like, chaos backstage. Uh, Dar amazing. We did talk about the Julius one on yeah. Bomb. It was a thing of beauty that he was doing that mid mid ankle lock too. By the way, which is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I do love Barry's comment. It was odd seeing the D'Angelo's <laughs> act like fangirls, all giddy with excitement. You know, yeah. every everybody has the people that they like, and the Street Profits. Like I can I can see the connection there. Uh, mm-hmm. Dar amazing. Also, the Street Profits return. Yes, mm-hmm. and we had uh, Dar amazing saying, "Boo, where are the Canadians? We don't need them." We have enough of them here. We don't need them in there. It's fine. <laughs> no Canadians. It's okay. Um, also going up here earlier, talking about the 
the mouthful that is the Heritage Global Invitational Cup thingy-mabobber. It's a mouthful, no worries, but in all seriousness, the lineup is dope. And yes, the, the graphics have been put in by Astrid. Thank you very much, Astrid. We do have the graphics where it is going to be, although you can't see it down here, that is Axiom being covered up by the Payback logo. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tyler Bate, Charlie Dempsey, and Butch on one side. Nathan Frazier, Joe Coffey, Akira Tozawa. I was so happy to see. By the way, I am so stoked that we get Akira Tozawa in this. Because I am a big Tozawa fan. I think he's fantastic. I would love to see him come back and stay down here at NXT. Okay. Um, as we know, it is one point for a draw, two points for a win. We'll go over the rest of all that stuff as we go. Um, it follows the similar things to the Heritage Cup. It's a 12-minute time limit. Uh, the matches don't have rounds like a British rounds match. Mm-hmm. But you have the same 12-minute timer that you would have in a British rounds match. So I like that. Actually, <laughs> British rounds matches are are longer, actually, because they're 18 minutes. So I'm sorry. Uh, Dara Macy's comment just threw me off because yeah. I, I, I know why he's talking <laughs> about exactly. That is very accurate. Um, yeah. No, I, I like the lineup of how they posted it there, too. And I did like how, and not only Butch in there on one side, but Tozawa on the other one, showing two people from the main roster from both brands there as well. So I like having that balance there, too, and within the lineup that we have. Yeah. And, and to keep up with this tournament, we're going to need our Rogue Energy. And if you want your Rogue Energy, go ahead and scan that QR code okay. right below Ashley. She's pointing to it right now. Or you can go to RogueEnergy.com. Use the promo code OLEPODS to get 10% off your order. Rogue Energy is a fantastic, sugar-free, uh, healthier alternative to your favorite energy drinks. They have some fantastic flavors. Most of their products come in the tub. But if you're in the United States and you want it, you can go ahead and get a couple of those flavors in cans if you need to be it in a can. Like our friend Asher, who loves her energy drink in a can. I prefer my watermelon energy drink to be in the form of a tub that I can go ahead and shake on a daily basis. But you can go ahead and get some fantastic flavors. Mel likes the blood orange. Chris Best has all kinds of flavors he's been trying out. Hopefully in the chat, he'll go ahead and tell us what his current favorite is right now. But if you want to find out what your favorite is going to be, go to RogueEnergy.com and use the promo code O-L-E-P-O-D-S, O-L-E-P-O-D-S, to get 10% off your order. Uh, we do have some more comments. I'm stoked that Tazawa is doing stuff in NXT. To me, it would make sense to have yeah. him. I agree. If you're not doing the... 24-7 championship. And by the way, mm-hmm. I love that they said that he's a former champion and just left it at that. Mind you, he's a former cruiserweight champion. Oh, yep. <laughs> but I love the fact that they just left that off and just was like, he's a former champion. Uh, it was great. Uh, in the Hot Seat Podcast, they ask us the hard questions. Right now, Astrid, mm-hmm. pick a winner on the Group A side and the Group B side. Who you got? Uh, shoot. It's so yeah, I'll put the, right I'll put the picture up for you again. Yeah, I'm looking at mine too. <laughs> I keep looking, but I forgot the axioms there. Uh, yeah, don't forget yeah. axiom in the Mike Wazowski spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll say maybe Butch and Nathan. I would like to see that. You think Butch and Nathan? Yeah. I'm going to go Tyler Bate and Akira Tozawa. <laughs> I, I, I think Tozawa's got a shot at this. I'm telling you. There's no better way than to put Tozawa in there. Because mm. he, the great thing about Tozawa is he can talk on the microphone. He's not good, but he can. Yeah. And what better group to put him up with than Metaphor? Yeah. Like I think there's a lot of fun with Tozawa and Metaphor, as we find out later in the show. Uh, speaking of things that we find out later in the show, I missed this. Well, uh, as we were talking, the Roxanne promo did come right after the Steel Cage match. This was really fun. I really enjoyed this. But, Asher, why don't you go ahead and give me your thoughts first, and then I'll follow in with what I got. I like the character change on this one a little bit because I like how, like, to give it an introduction, we have all the promos from all the girls in the main event throughout the night, uh, Roxanne being the first one. And what I like is, like, she names things from each of the girls. She's like, I respect JG for saying the effort herself. I forgot what she mentioned for Kiana. And she's like, after facing up with Blair at the Great American Bash, I, you know, I respect her for being a fighter. She's like, I was called a prodigy for a reason. And she's like, I'm done hearing about my potential and how I got a long career to go like I want it now. But I like it. She's like, I can name one thing for each of these girls. But she's like, 
you know, you know what? But you know why I won't? Because it will be a lie. And I was like, Roxanne, what? <laughs> I feel like I was like, are you turning heel on me right now? But I like the like a little attitude change that she gave us there because it just goes along with the story that she's had a little tweaks to her character and her attitude recently. So I thought the line itself was pretty interesting, but I love that she's the first one. And like they said in the uh, in the commentary, she's the only former champion in the match in itself as well. Yeah. Uh, my notes for this is that Roxanne per, uh, Perez talking about this. She doesn't care who she has to walk over and how many bodies she has to walk over to get to the NXT Women's Championship. She doesn't want to keep hearing about the fact that she's the prodigy and she has all these years ahead of her. She wants it now. She doesn't want to wait. She wants it now. I absolutely love this. This is a great little character flip on her. It keeps her the way she is, but it doesn't... Yeah. It gives her a little bit of an edge that she's desperately needed. My friend Rob jumping in, give me more Roxanne. Yes. I agree. Roxanne Perez, more of her is better. Roxanne says, I like you girls. And I don't. Yeah. It's the epitome of all babyface promos. I really like you, but I'm going to beat you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we get the champ. We we get we went ahead and talked about the champs, uh, all conferring, and then we get the most disgraceful thing of the night. The absolute well. Before we do that, we've got some picks coming in. We got Dar Amazing saying he has Tyler Bate and Joe Coffey. We have uh, Barry Monkey saying in Group A he's got Tyler Bate and Group B he's got Duke mm -hmm. Hudson, which I suspect nobody else will. Agree. I think what? Duke Hudson's going to do very well in this. We yeah. we here like Duke Hudson. I really? think he's a great heel. I still don't understand why he's a baby face, but I think <laughs> he's a great heel. Yeah. And I still watch him in the terms of a heel who's tricking everybody. And I'm yeah. waiting for him to trick people. But yeah. no, I, 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 I think Duke Hudson is a perfectly good choice, especially yeah. in something like this. I'm going out on a limb and saying Tazawa. Because I just don't want to be basic and be like Joe Coffey or, you know, because that's an easy answer who, by the way, should have a shot at this at this Heritage Cup. But I just think it'd be fun to give one of the main roster guys the opportunity. You can't pick them both. So you got to pick either Pete Dunne or him. And I think it's so much better to just go ahead and pick Pete Dunne to lose to Tyler Bate and then have Tyler Bate have to go face-to-face -face mm -hmm. with Axiom. Mm -hmm. Chris Best does say that he's enjoying his watermelon and blood orange. So there we go. Getting all of our stuff in. But the disgraceful thing of the night here. The most disgraceful act. Metaphor. Up there absolutely disgracing the former Toxic Lounge. Yeah. Holy ground that was the Toxic Lounge is disgraced by these awful people in the metaphor. Just, okay. just despicable. Oh, by the way, there was also a match here between Butch and uh, Charlie Dempsey, which was ace. I really enjoyed this. This was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It took me a moment. I was like, where's he going with this? Like, what a happier next is not this Chris one. Oh, what the heck? Yeah. Oh, no, it is. It is because we see metaphor in the Toxic Lounge. And that is. Yeah, but I was, I was thinking of the match and not the. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, really had, I had a bunch of fun with this. I really enjoyed it. These yeah. two guys work so well together. Um, we'll get to Barry Monkey's comment in a minute because I wholeheartedly agree. Um, but that's yeah. that's for uh, when we get to the the Ilya Dragunov segment in a minute. Uh, but back to this the the first match uh, where uh, Butch and Charlie Dempsey just tear it down with a ground based mm -hmm. joint manipulation, finger manipulation, the kind of thing that turns my stomach in a good way, like it makes me cringe and go ooh, but not like a a death match does where I'm like oh that's disgusting, I don't like that. It's you can see how all of this is general in like just hurts like how like bending the finger back. We've all had our fingers bent the wrong way and how much it hurts. So like joint manipulation is just so great. Oh goodness. <laughs> it's the meta <laughs> No, it is not the meta club. We are not I like that one meta club. Toxic metaphor. <laughs> oh, Daphne, how could you? <laughs> My poor toxic lounge disgraced by these awful, awful people. Uh, but no, this match was fantastic. I, I thought Charlie Dempsey was going to win here, but I was very happy to see Pete Dunn, I mean, Butch pick up the win. He was dressed like Pete Dunn. I'm sorry. He I was put Pete Dunn in my notes. I didn't care. I said, they Butch even who? called him a bruiser. Yeah. <coughs> oh, they were, I just wish they'd just go back to Pete Dunn. 
I don't mind Butch, honestly. I think Butch is fine. But, like, I just miss calling him Pete Dunn because that's what I see him as. Not only that, but it just it goes back to, like, oh, I guess we'll talk about it now, the Tyler Bate interview where he's like, no. yeah, Butch is, you know, a former rival, one of my greatest rivals. We had, like, a lot going on. I was like, oh, I know. I don't yeah, like Yeah, but what matches, did you, what matches did you have, Tyler? Because I've never seen you wrestle Butch. I've seen you wrestle a guy named Pete Dunn who looks an awful lot like Butch. And then and then he mentioned Axiom in the way he did, and I was like, oh my god, he has two, like the two people right there with the name changes in that one interview. But the way he talked about Butch, I was like, this hurts me because I was like, I just want to go say it with me, Tyler. Pete Dunn. <laughs> Butch had a wardrobe malfunction. I could see his nipples. Remember, the male nipple is okay. Female nipple not allowed. Just remember, that's the rule of television. Yeah. Um, fantastic match. Pete Dunn wins at the better end. It was great. It didn't take long, but I enjoyed it, and I can't wait for. I want more of this. Like, I want him to come back to NXT just so I can have more great matches with Pete Dunn down here. Yeah. Um, and could you imagine Pete Dunn and Carmelo Hayes? <laughs> Pete Don't... Dunn and Wesley. <sighs> that's not helping. Um, <laughs> How about this one? Pete Dunn versus Trick Mello or Trick Williams. Yeah. After seeing him with Dra uh, with Dragonoff last week, mm -hmm. yeah, I I'd like to see what he could do with with Pete Williams with Pete Dunn. Uh, Pete Williams, Pete, Pete Williams. <laughs> yeah, get him in there with the with the best Canadian wrestler in the world, Pete Williams. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, back to some of my yeah, I don't blame me neither. Oh, uh, no. yeah, mm -hmm. sure, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, it'll be better than what we're going to get next week. But, you know, we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. We have Ilya, Ilya Dragunov walking backstage. And then Dragon Lee is being interviewed, in which my mother goes, Hey, is that Dominic's dad? And I go, No, that's Dragon Lee. She's like, Oh, that's his uncle. And I'm like, No, it's not his uncle. They're not related. No. Mama um, <laughs> Fry is thinking all mass 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 wrestlers are all the same person. Uh, I love Mama Fry. She's great. She's not feeling well, so I'm giving her the pass on that one. Yeah. But he's sitting here talking about how he... <laughs> Guys in Spanish. <laughs> <coughs> uh, Dragon Lee doing a basic interview. Mustafa Ali comes and makes it that much better. I mean, like, you know what? I know what you're going to say. You're going to say you want a singles match, but you already had one. It's not fair that you've already had one and I haven't had a singles match. Oh my god, Mustafa is the most annoying man in the world, and I love it to tears. It is so good. Because he's he's not wrong. That's the funny yeah. part. He yeah. gets to say all this and not be wrong. So, he says that it's not fair, that he needs to have his one-on-one -on -one match, and he basically tells Dragon Lee, yeah, so you agree with me, right? And before Dragon Lee can say anything, he just walks away. Yeah. And then Dragon Lee goes, I don't understand. <laughs> no, he said, and, and then he said, no confío en él. So he, he's like, I don't trust him. Oh, is that what it is? I thought he said, no comprendo, which means I don't understand. No, no confío en él. Oh, no confío en él. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> eh, close enough. I thought he was going to say something about, like, I didn't understand everything he said because I knew, like, he used a couple words that I, like, if I was, I basically, some big like, words. English. Yeah, I was like, I would have been like, that would have made more sense to me hearing him say, like, what did he say? And, that kind of thing, but when he said I don't, I don't trust him. I was like, I don't know what that has to do with what just happened, but I guess we'll see. I mean, it does, has a little bit to do with it. I mean, you know, yeah. it's all about trust. It's all about everything that's going on. It's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, we then go ahead and we move on to Ilya Dragunov in the ring. He puts over Trick Williams really good. He says that Trick did a really good job. Trick was fantastic the other night and really showed him what he has and that Trick is no longer a sidekick. That Trick is legit and Trick is real. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. He, and he, and he, gives the, he tries to get the crowd to cheer for Trick Williams. I'm like, okay, so they really want this Trick Williams thing to keep going. Yeah. Like, all right, I'm down for this. And then the metaphor gets involved. You know those moments where you have... Uh, I don't know how much Looney Tunes you've watched. But you have the Roadrunner and you have uh, the Coyote. Mm -hmm. Wiley Coyote. And the Coyote will chase the Roadrunner and he'll run off the side of a cliff. 
Yeah. And he'll stand there for a second and everything's okay. And he's like, yeah, everything's fine. And then all of a sudden he falls and he just falls down into the day. This, that was this. Your Dragonoff was doing fine, and in the beginning, no one dark is involved, and he's saying some stuff, and I'm like, okay, it's fine. And then it falls off a cliff. <laughs> it it just fell off a fucking cliff. Um, last legend was in inintelligible. I could, as Barry said earlier, uh, mm. where is the line right here? Uh, where is it? I know I saw it. I think I know. Did we delete it? No, I don't think we deleted it. It's got to be. Oh, here. Yes, there, there it is. Yes, I couldn't understand a word last legend said. They need something. I agree. She just started piping in things and whatnot. Like Jakara, at least she speaks clearly. Real, recognize real, I think was one of the only things she really said that was of, of yeah. substance. But like, mm -hmm. at least she speaks clearly. Um,. But Last Legend could not be bothered to speak clearly. I couldn't understand what she said. Uh, Oromensa said yeah. something in German that I don't understand and never got translated. But apparently, I think it was like Puff the Magic Dragon or something like that. I don't know. But yeah. Ilya Dragunov thought it was a bit childish. and was like, oh, ha ha, you're talking to me in German. And then they make the match for next week between Mensa and dragging off. And I'm like... <laughs> no. Yes, Bad please Rob. do. Bad Rob. No. Yes, do it. <laughs> um, thoughts, opinions, less hateful <laughs> outrage than me. <laughs> it just... I like the dragging off promo. Like, the way it started with, like, the way he was putting over Trick and even after putting him over he's like you know I'm now this is my time to go for the, my ultimate destiny I want to go against you Carmelo like, like that's my focus now once the one dart interrupted I went why this was fine they could have ended up right there is it just felt like a hot mess and another thing I don't like about Lash is like she, her voice is like I don't want to say squeaky but when she, she's like almost she's like screaming in a way but she does it in such a way that you don't understand what she's saying and I just I don't like it. I really don't. It's like, skis, 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 skis. and I'm like, wait, you're going so fast. Hold on. I'm like, I know it. English is my second language, but Jesus, it takes me a little bit sometimes. And with English her. English is my first language, and I still don't understand what the hell <laughs> and she's it just, saying. It took me a while. I'm like, what the heck are you trying to say? But I just, I feel like this promo would have been done better if it hadn't gone interrupted, because I feel like it was going so well, and an interruption didn't make it great for me at all. Yeah, just like, what was the point in this? And then it, it just made me laugh that when Noam Dar goes, yeah, I'm off for the next few weeks until, like, no mercy. So I was like, okay, so he's going to face off against Dragunov. So he's like, no, you're going against Or, and I'm like... Well, no. See, that's the thing. He starts to say it like, I think it's going to be him. And then Oro yeah. interrupts and puts himself in the match. Yeah. So just... Yeah, no. It's a no and for me. I also... <laughs> I don't understand why we're, we're Dragunov is fighting to go against Carmelo Hayes. Mm -hmm. Why are we having him involved in the Heritage Cup? Shenanigans yeah. with Noam Dar. Knowing that Noam Dar's next challenger is the winner of this big tournament. And by the way, you've already told us that Noam's not wrestling for five weeks. Yep. So, like, what? Dragunov gets to wrestle Noam Dar for the hell of it? Yeah. Like, I don't understand why Dragonoff would do this other than to just beat up Noam Dar, which, honestly, we'd all want to do. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't blame him for that one. <laughs> that one, but... Yeah. It didn't... It, it's a no for me, as Astrid said. Um, <laughs> we then get the promo from Von Wagner. As <sighs> I heard, he... This is Von Wagner's most sexual promo since he turned characters. He said, come Tuesday... Ron, it's going to be me and you. We're going to be fighting again. And I'm going to be bringing the hard wood with me. So all you got to do is bring your ass here. And I'm just like... And you're going to get tabled. Great. And one, and one promo. As, as, <laughs> as they say in the Raw Watch Along, Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper. Um, <sighs> I don't... I don't want to see this. I don't want anything to do with this. Uh, I want... Baron Corbin versus Von Wagner because I still am mostly interested in seeing that match because that seemed fun, but I want nothing to do with Braun Breaker anymore. 
I just want him to go to the main roster. I really, really wish he'd just go to the main He's roster. Like, you can skedaddle now. We're good. <laughs> but the match is going to be next week, and it's going to be no DQs. So that'll be great. Right? Sure. We get women's match number one on the show tonight. One of two. Only two matches. But again, lots of time focused with all the different promos for the main event match. And the main event match got decent time. So in the grand scheme of things, while two matches isn't great, it's better than most shows do. And this guy, for the competitors involved, this guy got way more time than I thought it was going to get. <laughs> Ashley, why don't you go ahead and talk about the actual match itself, though? I know there were some that I missed a little bit here and there, but of the things that really like stood out to me, and unfortunately not in a good way, um, I know at one point, I believe it was Electra. Dana had Electra in the corner and she was trying to elbow her in the way she did. I don't know if it was a, the combination of her not hitting them, but Electra not selling them either. I could just see Dana just elbowing her like that and that was it. And I was like, I don't like it. <laughs> and then there was a point that Kelani was covering uh, Lola. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, she was doing a cover on uh, Electra, but Lola broke it. Even as well, I still broke the cover. Kalani still was laying on her like like she was still pinning her. And I'm like, did you not feel her like breaking the cover? Like, get off of her now at this point. But she was just laying there for a moment, like still, I don't know if she was waiting for the pin or what she was waiting for. It just didn't feel when she, when Lola came in to break it. But that was like an awkward timing there too. Um, and another thing that it just like, made me think about later is like Lola was pu push Dana towards the seal steps towards the end. You know, that distracts Kalani. So Lola's able to get the the win here with the double team on Kalani and then pinning Kalani. And then all of a sudden Dana's just got up already and she's screaming because she's crazy and like visually like upset that she lost. But then I was like, didn't you just get hit, hit by the steel steps? Like not, not even a minute ago. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. I, the timing here was not great. Barry puts the best one average competent team versus one horrendously bad team. <laughs> Uh, Barry, I'm curious which is which for you. Uh, I'll explain why. <laughs> My favorite part of this was Vic talking about how people are teaching people and how Dana Brooke is taking Kalani Johnny Aaron under his wing. And I'm like, yes, Vic. Okay, I'm with you here. And he's like, and on the other side, and I'm like, no, Vic, I'm, I've lost you now. There's nobody mentoring the other person on the other side. And then he starts with Lola Vice is mentoring. I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? Did you take a Booker T pill? Like, Lola Vice is training Electra Lopez on her MMA work. Why the fuck do I give a shit? We're wrestling. Electra Lopez isn't going to the UFC. I don't give a shit. That's true. By the way, you've also never once mentioned that Lola Vice is a former UFC fighter. I was going to say that too. So why would we randomly just start learning? Like, we all know who she is. We know that she's Valerie Lareda. We know that she's a former UFC bantamweight champion. But why? Why would you... Why would you tell us that, assuming that we know? Like, this is a Booker T line. Also, speaking of Booker T lines, they had an entire conversation about Booker being hot and sweaty and about not telling Charmel. I missed that part. Jeez. Why don't we just have Jerry Lawler out there? Like, honestly, at least with Jerry, I know it's coming and I get it. It's funny. It pops back to an attitude era in a time where that stuff was okay. But, like... <laughs> can we just get the Kalani Jordan Dana Brooke match so we can get rid of Dana Brooke and get Kalani Jordan doing something competent? Well, I was going to say, I hate to break it to you, they moved her to the NXT roster part on the website. <laughs> so, I don't think she's leaving anytime soon. Lola and Electra are best friend gold. Like, I have no problem with Lola and Electra. Yeah. I thought they were really good in this match. They were mm -hmm. really good in this match. They, ha I they had a really good a double team move, especially like that ending though was really well done. Yeah, the kick into the slam that they do is fantastic. And Lola is getting better and better week in and week out. Kalani is getting better week in and week out. 
Dana Brooke is reg regressing week in and week out to the point where I just don't want to see her anymore. But no, between the commentary in this match and me half paying attention to the match while I was trying to set up, get my setup reset up because I have finally gotten uh, my room set up to have my television as a second screen. Um, yeah. I didn't, I liked the idea of the match. I didn't so much mind the match. But God, we got to get rid of Dana Brooke because Lola and Electra aren't terrible. No. But we don't have any real women's tag teams to put them up against. We have two. And to be honest, none of them are the quality that we need to have women's tag team title matches. <laughs> Basically making the jokes, man, talk about a heat wave of a match. Am I right? Oh, Booker T is a special kind of stupid, isn't he? I love him. Don't get me wrong. I love Booker T for everything he's done. But the one thing we can all agree on, and this is something we agreed on in 2010, this is something we agreed on when Booker T tried to commentate his own match, and this is something we can agree on now. Booker T still sucks at commentary. I he sucked the then. Yeah. He sucked then, now, and forever. Together. <laughs> I want to cover a data bro. No, no, do not put that into the universe, Rob. Bad. Put a simulation tomorrow when you do wrestle drafts. There you go. I didn't perish. I wish Dana would succeed, but I haven't seen much improvement. Like, I'm not sitting here rooting for Dana to fail. I don't want her to fail. I want her to be good. I want her to be quality, competitive, championship caliber. It would be it would be nothing short of my favorite thing to see people like Dana Brooke and Lash Legend prove me wrong. Like, I rag on them a lot on this show because I don't like what they're doing right now currently. That being said, I would like nothing more than to be proven wrong in the future and to have them, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Parrish, on the other hand, I want her to fail, and she's not, and she's even doing that right. She's not even doing that right. All right. Moving on from Dana Brooke and Kalani Jordan, because we spent way too much time there. We had Gigi Dolan promo. This was pretty all right. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. Uh, did you find anything fascinating in this promo? No, I liked it better than the other ones she's done about her family and you know the background story of hers. I, I think the part that I like the most like where she's like it's between the devil that I know and the devil that I don't know and like having this match it's a lot of chaos and that's the devil that I know so I know I can handle that but it was like it was better than the one about her background and her mother and whatever happened with her it was a lot better so I, I liked it and then we get I'll be honest with the exception of the main event my match of the night Surprisingly, my match of the night. And as much as I liked Pete Dunne versus Charlie Dempsey, Eddie Thorpe, Eddie Thorpe versus Donovan Dijak, or just Dijak now. I love this. I thought this was great. These two have such a fun, fantastic chemistry working together where they just have this ebb and flow where they just work well. Um, Dijak brings out the best in Eddie Thorpe. Uh, so far out of anybody he's worked with. Um, he just... He can take and sell as a big man better than most. Uh, in his years working with people like Keith Lee um, and Jay Lethal, you can see it in the way he moves and works in that ring. That he knows exactly when he has to sell, when he has to be strong and no sell. He does a really fantastic job. Um, Eddie Thorpe proved everything he needed to in this match. The story of the match being that belt that Dijak needs a little bit extra to get the advantage over Eddie Thorpe. I like that because Dijak's the heel and you're allowed to cheat and you're allowed to have that little bit of extra as, as the heel. I liked Eddie Thorpe trying to use it on his own, but using it as trying to use it as a whip before Dijak gets the better of him. And then Dijak gets the, 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 the you know, the belt on the outside when the steel chair gets introduced and he gets the cheap shot for the win. Fantastic. Great way to do it. It books us to another match, possibly either the week before pay, uh, the week before No Mercy or the week after No Mercy, 
we can go ahead and get a match between them uh, in a big spot to have Eddie Thorpe go over and have the big win. But I thought Dijak and Thorpe looked fantastic here. And again, more pro progression towards Eddie Thorpe as a character, more progression towards Eddie Thorpe as a viable championship contender. I was really in in enthralled with this. What about you? Yeah, I think my favorite parts were like those parts and like when they have the count out and they're like, are they going to get like that count out win? And when you get Dijak going, I'm going to beat your ass and just grabs the chair like he's about to do it. And then we have that back and forth between him and uh, Eddie Thorpe in this part. So I like that aspect of like, he feels like he needs that uh, to be able to beat Eddie though. And then you know, that storytelling within the match was definitely my favorite part of it. But yeah, it's like, I'm looking forward to having them have it the match again just to have Eddie have that victory that he needs over Dijak. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of good stuff happening here. Um, they did very well with Eddie Thorpe. Like I said, it, it, they were a little slow in getting us the reasons why we need to care about Eddie Thorpe and what his character means. But now that they've given us that and they're starting to progression here, I could see him in the North American title picture. I could see him in the Heritage Cup title picture. Mm -hmm. And I can see Dijak moving up and going ahead with the Wesleys and the Carmelo Hayes and the Ilya Dragunovs and being in that NXT championship picture. I could see him winning the NXT title in the, in the next year or so. I think that'd be great. Uh, we have lots of great Dana Brooke jokes in the chat. You can go ahead and read those at your own. Um, it's fantastic. Um, again, I wish Dana Brooke nothing but the best. Unfortunately, she's not going to succeed at that. So it is what it is. Um, after this, we get the Kiana James promo, where Kiana James talks about how she's going to go ahead and win the match and what she means and what it means to when you hear the name Kiana James. And I go, I think about Taryn from accounting. When I hear the name <laughs> Kiana James, all I think about is Taryn from accounting. And she's like, it means success. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. It means Taryn from accounting. And even Taryn from accounting doesn't mean success. <laughs> and she's good. What are you, Kiana? You're a knockoff. You're not even as good as the re the real brand. You're the you're the knockoff brand. <laughs> oh, we're gonna, we're gonna yeah. bite that one in the ass later on, aren't I? Um, <laughs> anything that you want to talk about from Kiana James promo? I like how she starts listing things for each one of the girls. I, I like the one of my favorite ones. Those are Roxanne. What she got? She Roxanne has been through a lot. Like, oh my god. Um, do you just like? like, like do you just like when people list things? No. Not Are you sure? Because every every one of these promos, you've been like, I like it when she did this because she listened to this. But I mean, because I, I she she talks about each one of the girls, so I like that. It's like she doesn't I, miss anybody. She has a point for everything. I know she's a business lady. She's got her lists down pat. Yeah. Um, but like I, I like like you said, she said I don't make excuses. I make things happen. She's sex is measured by action. And I like how they show her like being dominant in her matches as this is happening at the same time. But it's like. They had to work real hard to find those clips, didn't they? Jeez. <laughs> Probably. We'll never know. Uh, right here we get a Baron Corbin versus Braun Breaker promo where Baron Corbin wishes Braun Breaker luck. And Braun's like, I don't need luck. I'm facing that idiot. And yada, yada, yada. And Baron Corbin goes ahead and wishes him luck with his t-shirt company. Now, I don't think it is. But we know the internet's going to take it this way. Is it mentioning the t-shirt company? Is that just a shot at AEW? Or is that just people wanting to read too much into crap? No, I, I was just mostly thinking of like the ugly shirt that he has. because Well, just, it, it is. It, it, it's meant because of the ugly shirts that Braun's been wearing where he's like printing his own shirts. Mm -hmm. But we all know how AEW started. It started as the t-shirt company. And I wasn't sure yeah. if this is one of those small veiled things that WWE does every yeah. now and then where they do a small veiled threat. Or I was mostly either. mostly thinking of the way that Braun cuts off his shirts because I don't like how he does it. It looks terrible on him. So that was my mindset when I was like, "Yeah, I don't like, I don't like what I'm seeing right now." Uh, but I thought it was funny. He's like, "Yeah, it'll be your end of days," and he goes like mocking him. Like Braun says that to uh, Barry, Barry. But it's just funny how Barry throws it back at him too. And he's like, "You know, good luck with him next week." And he just pats him on the way. He's like, "Just make sure you don't get tabled." And then Braun just mocks him with like, I'm like, he does that face that my younger sister does. And I just thought of my younger sister when I'm watching this, like, uh, I don't know if I, if I like it. I'm like, it's just a childish thing, but I just, I don't know if it was random, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if this is where they had it, but we're going to go ahead and talk about it here. They have the Bray, uh, the Bray Wyatt promo. Yeah. 
They talk about Bray Wyatt. Um, it still hurts. It still sucks. Uh, I was playing my WWE themes playlist and Shatter came on today. And that theme, that theme is so good. Um, we miss Bray. And again, if you want to go ahead and have a more in-depth talk about Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk and the legacies and the careers that they had, please go ahead and check out Turnbuckle Talk. They did a fantastic job earlier today while we were watching NXT, so we couldn't be a part of it. But I know that they obviously killed it because those guys are fantastic. This is where I believe we had the Trick Mello promo, where Carmelo Hayes came backstage and he was talking to Trick Williams. And they were talking about the championship. And he's like, hey, I saw that you did a good job last week. He's like, yeah. But, you know, I still I still got this work to get rid of this asterisk. And I'm like, Carmelo, there is no asterisk next to your win. You won. There's no asterisks. Nobody other than Carmelo Hayes is even giving a second thought to the fact that Ilya Dragunov ran his head into that title. Nobody. Even Ilya doesn't give a shit about how the match ended. He just wants another shot. Yeah. Only Carmelo has it stuck in his own head that it's it's that he's not proved it enough. Mm-hmm. And I loved how they have turned Carmelo into a little bit of an asshole here. Mm-hmm. Where he's talking to, to Trick and he's like, oh, so you don't think I can beat him? And he's like, that, that, that's not what I said, Melo. He's like, well, do you think I can beat him? And Trick takes a second to try to answer and he thinks. He's like, oh, okay, I get it. You don't think I can win either, do you? And he walks away and he's like, he's just like, he's talking to nobody. He's like, no, I don't think you can win. I know you can. But Mello's not there to hear it because Mello walked off because Mello's being a bit of a jerk. Mm-hmm. And it's great because it's positioning Trick Williams as a baby face. And when this turn comes, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. And I really hope that there's a match between the two of them before Mello goes up. It's going to hurt me real bad when this turn happens. <laughs> And it's all it's, Mark's fault. Yeah, I was like, he's planted an idea ever since that I haven't been able to stop thinking about it every time I see them together. And then this, it just reminded me of those rom-coms when they said those, they have that kind of breakup scene in the climax before they get back together. That's what it reminded me of when he goes, I don't think I can. I know you can. I'm like... <laughs> the best part was, Trick, Trick was all excited because he was talking to the Street Profits. And we were about to get a match between Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams against the Street Profits. Right. And then Carmelo shot all over the whole moment. And I'm like, ah, damn you, Melo, you ruined something nice. Um, speaking of something nice, Astrid, you have some news that I want you to go ahead and share with everybody. And I can put it in the chat as we'll get to the uh, yeah. people talking in just a moment. I should I use the breaking news like since we're we're still in the BO kind of move, but it's, it's too you late. You know what? <laughs> breaking news. There you go. I, I don't think it'll be that important, but still. <laughs> um no, I got accepted to Debbie Shop Affiliate Shop. So uh, obviously the price is not gonna change for you, but if you click on the link and you shop through my link, then I get a percentage of that. So I'll be I'll be uh, promoting them more often now as uh, the affiliate now. So that's the link. So if you can shop and the using my link. The clickable version of the link is in all three chats for the three of us. It will be in the YouTube description of the video on both the Our Local Establishment version and the Asher Bizarro version. We just want to... Th- Congratulations, Asher. Congratulations. Great job on being accepted to that program. And like I said, all especially right now, we're talking about, you know, Dar Amazing saying, rest in peace, Bray and yeah. Terry. We got HBC bad guys coming in saying hola. And then he talks about, I remember how terrible Trick was on the mic when he first arrived. Nice to see him grow since then. He's done amazing work to get here. But when talking about Bray Wyatt, if you want to go ahead and buy some Bray Wyatt merchandise, now is the time. All the net proceeds from all his merchandise is going to his family. Go ahead and use Astrid's link and go ahead and pick yourself up a Bray Wyatt shirt. Pick yourself up a lantern. Pick yourself up, whatever you might. If you're just shopping on there and you just want to make sure that, you know, to give it a shot just in case you might buy something, go ahead and go through Astrid's link again. They're all in the chats. In each of our chats, there is a link for it. You can go in there and it doesn't cost you anything different. All you do is you use that affiliate link and Astrid gets a little bit back on the back end every time you buy something. So you don't have to spend any extra money when you buy something from WWEshop.com. You're getting the same goods at the same price, the same everything. You're just helping Astrid out along the way. 
Mm-hmm. It's good to help our friends. Mm-hmm. HBC fi- saying fire. Mm-hmm. We got Dar Amazing saying yay, Astrid. Yes, it's very good. We're very, very proud of Astrid for that. Um, we move on to the next thing, which is the Los Lotharios backstage. It, I like it. They finally started talking. Yes. We don't, get, we don't just get text chat between the two. Barry Monk would be very happy. There's no more texting. They were in the same room talking to each other. And I like that they both have this like scratch on their chest. And you see um, Angel Garza trying to wipe the blood off of his hands. And I like that imagery of the blood and the scratching. And how they have to scratch and claw their way back to where they were. And they talk about how they had everything and it was ripped away. And how the greed for the spotlight and the greed for women and all these other things, it tore them apart. It tore them away from what they were supposed to be doing. Honoring their grandfather, honoring their family lineage. That The best thing that they have going on is that they have family and they have a togetherness. And they take the Los Lotharios shirt and they each have one side and they tear it apart. And they, they keep playing these moments from their from their career. And you see like the three scratches going across it. And I just thought that was really cool and interesting and different. Something we haven't seen before as they talk about being ripped apart. And they say, we start from scratch starting next week. So next week, and it's, it's, it's as does Angel and Humberto return next week. We don't get Los Lotharios. So we might get a new nickname. I have a bad fear because... Angel said one line and it, and it makes me really worried. I have I have the the blood, was it? The fire I have the oh, fire and yeah. you have the heart. Right. Mm-hmm. And I have a bad feeling it's gonna be some kind of mix of fire and heart. <laughs> Most likely in Spanish and, and, and it's not gonna work. <laughs> if they called them Fuego Corazones, it's not gonna be good. <laughs> It's not bad. It's okay. Oh, right. Yeah. We're going to talk about Fuego Corazon every week? Yeah. It's not like you, a I'm Spanish a... soap opera. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> this today. Hold on. We need some ASMR here. Yeah. This afternoon on En Fuego Corazones, we have Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo taking on the Creed Brothers and Ivy Dyer. <laughs> there you go. But am I right? Is, isn't that what Fuego Corazon sounds like? It sounds like some <laughs> B-tier Spanish soap opera. Yes, I know. You're typing down the time. 102.45. <laughs> you know me too well. <laughs> uh, no, but what I liked about it is like when he when Angel finds it, he starts touching it like he wants to take the blood away. And then he sees Umberto and he's like, where do we share the same dream? Because I feel like we did. And he's like, oh, look, we have the same scars. Um, he's like, oh, I think he's looking down at us because he knows we need to restart. And he visited us for a reason to give us that fresh start. And I like when he said that because he's like, I, you know, I, I have his fire and you have his heart. And I like that moment that we have between them. It's like, I think it's like our time to have that restart. And then when they said next week, I was like, oh, I'm excited. I want to see what they look. I want to see if like the attire is different too because another thing is like if you think about it from angels like angels ripping off his pants that's another thing from Los Atarios so I don't think he's going to be doing that and then I wonder if they're like their attires both of them I can imagine are going to be different moving forward too. Remember he did he, he did the pants ripping off thing way before it was Los Atarios. Yeah but still like that's something that they're ripping apart based on what they're talking about too. Ring announcer Ed. <laughs> no, no, that was me trying to be B level Spanish soap opera narrator voice. Oh, huh. I, I knew, you know what, I, you know, the moment I realized it halfway through the third word as I started talking, I'm like, shit, this is going to be a clip. <laughs> Damn it. Yes. We get the Blair Davenport promo, which I, I thought was really good. Blair does a really good job of just being. A badass bitch being like, you know what? The others can talk about championships and they can talk about this. Mm-hmm. I ain't done that. But you know what I've done? I've beaten bitches down worldwide and I've even beaten them down here. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, thank you, Blair. Just being real and being like, I don't yeah. give a shit what these other girls have. You know what I have? I'm brutal and I'm just going to win. Yeah. I like my favorite point. She goes, it's three for the price of one. <laughs> In this match, I was like, that's just exactly how it is with her. And I think she even said, like, I've been beating up people for, like, 10 years now. So it's, like, it's basically nothing new to me. But I like her having re- to be able to reflect that upon what with the match now here. 
But it just, I, I love how on, how honest she was. Like, I'm not going through all this bull crap. I'm just giving you as it is. And yeah, it just said that little bit was really well done. But again, now that we've seen all four, it's a really great job of them going through and being all four of them being who they are. They're all doing this in character and it feels comfortable and it feels natural. Even with Roxanne changing characters over the last couple months, this, this promo still feels natural to her. It doesn't feel entirely out of place for her to be able to have a promo like this, which I think is great. We get Rhea and Dom via social media because, of course, they're via social media because whatever. Uh, but they go ahead and say, you know what? Dragon Lee, Batman, he wants to go ahead and have a shot. Mustafa Ali, he wants his shot. Well, you know what? Next week, you guys should just fight it out on your own. And then Mommy goes, well, there has to be a winner. And Dom goes, you know what, Bobby? Mommy, you're right. There does have to be a winner. So you know what? To ensure there's a winner, I'm going to be the special graph referee. And I went, oh. Yeah, I went, uh... Shit. Uh, that made that match a whole lot less interesting. Yep. Agreed. <laughs> but we get that next week. Speaking of social media video, we're going to go ahead and do two more social media videos before we go ahead and, and round out the night. We have NXT Anonymous. I know we're skipping ahead a little bit here. NXT Anonymous going ahead and... It is Fallon Henley as she is... By the way, Miles is picking up the dirtiest ring I have ever seen. And why does he have, like, a outdoor, like, spray bottle for, like, spraying plants in the ring? Like, I don't understand what the hell that was. But Miles is in there sweeping up the ring, and Fallon comes over, and he's like, she's like, aren't you sick of doing all this crap for them? Well, I'm just paying my dues. And she's like, No. No, if Jensen and Briggs would have done shit like this to me, I would have told them to go to hell. Yeah. She's like, Jensen and Briggs are looking for somebody for next uh, for next week. They want to have they need they need a third for their trio. Do you want to be their third? He's like, I get to wrestle on NXT. Like, I love mm -hmm. him, but like, oh, this made him feel so dorky, and I did, and I, I fit right in with Jensen, so it'll be perfect. But yeah. it just made him feel so dorky, where he was like, wait. I get to wrestle on NXT television? And she's like, yeah, yeah, of course. You're going to be the third in their match. He's like, okay. And then I, I, I saw her. He's going to be like, well, just don't tell Mr. Gulak. I was waiting for don't tell Mr. Gulak. I was waiting for something it. like that, yeah. So apparently next week we're getting Jensen, Briggs, and Miles Bourne taking on the Oompa Loompa, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Drew Gulak. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be fun. Uh, and the last social media message we had was Wesley with his uh, Matt Chat question where he goes ahead and talks about what's next for him. Uh, Matt Chat, there's a nice reference for any of you going in Raw fans. Uh, but, um, you know, Wesley just basically saying, you know what? I lost, but you know what? I'm going to win next time. Melo, it was all my fault that I lost. It was my fault. I, I shouldn't have taken that extra chance. But everything you threw at me, I had. Oh, well, yeah, it's typically how you lose a match. You go out there, you, you do the best you can, you hang with the guy, and then you make a mistake, mm -hmm. and the other guy takes advantage of it and wins. Like, Wes, that's how matches yeah. work. You, you <laughs> should understand this by now. But it is what it is. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring up this comment from Barry Monkey because I think this is going back to Miles Bourne. Yeah. The reason why you don't understand exactly what Miles Bourne is saying is because Miles Bourne is a deaf wrestler. And his way of talking is a little bit unusual. If you haven't heard it before, you have to get used to it. Um, I spent a lot of time working with uh, a few deaf people in my in my life, so I understand the the cadence and the way they talk, and how they they. We all learn how to talk by sounding things out, hearing it, and and saying it. Whether it's English, whether it's Spanish, it's all the same. It's how you learn. When you're deaf, you don't learn that, so you have to kind of pick it up as you go along. And words aren't as clear as you want them to be. And sometimes you're not saying what you think you're saying and you're saying it. So you kind of got to piece things together. He does a really, really good job and he's doing better and better every week, week in and week out. Mm -hmm. But occasionally, and then, no, no, that's fine. Yeah. It's fine. You know, you have to learn. He, he's, he's, not a, he's not a talent who's on NXT every week. He mm -hmm. is one of the, um, the university students that they've brought in as part of these new classes where they bring them in from the college ranks and they try to teach him how to wrestle. He's, he's new. People haven't gotten accustomed to him. He hasn't talked a lot, so you don't really hear much. So it's not that big a deal. But it's why we keep saying every time we see him, 
when people talked to him in a promo segment, you notice Fallon never looked at the camera in this segment. She kept mm -hmm. herself three quarters turned so that she could always be looking up at him. When Drew Gulak mm -hmm. talks to him, Drew always looks him dead in the eyes when yeah. he talks to him because it's it's just a respect thing and to make sure that Miles can 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 react the way Miles needs to to be able to read the lips. Um, but Miles is doing it, and it's, it, you didn't say anything wrong. Not understanding him no. is fine. And mm -hmm. once you because you weren't making fun of him, you weren't like, "Oh, this guy can't talk." You were just like, "I couldn't really understand what he had to say." And upon knowing this, next time you can listen a little bit more, and you can try to understand it. And sometimes you won't. He wasn't mic'd in this interview. It was a bit hard to pick up a lot of the things he said. So mm -hmm. it's not that big a deal. But you know, it's one of those things where it's them giving an opportunity to somebody. And, and Dar Amazing hits it right on the head. I was head. about we'll to point about that out, too. I was yeah. going to say, if you see a picture of him, he looks like a younger version of Randy Orton. He does, look like a very, he does look like a very young yeah. uh, OVW Randy Orton. Mm -hmm. um, I, I expect big things from him. I think he's going to be great. But again, no, Barry. There's, there's, there's no ill will to that. Yeah. They, 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 they had some chemistry. You, you, you say this. I'm not sure if it's tongue-in-cheek. I thought that was a pretty good segment. I thought they did have a little bit of chemistry. I thought they did have a little bit of flirting in there. I thought she was flirting with him a little bit. I wouldn't mind it if he was a little bit starstruck with her. And maybe he has a little bit of a crush on her. I think that would play out well with the storylines that we've had to deal with with Fallon and Kiana and Jensen anyways. I think that would be something fun to play into it. So I think that's all for it. I really like this small, quick segment. But it is nice to always point out when we get the opportunity to point out to people who, like Barry Monkey, might not know. A deaf wrestler... By the way, how great is that and how accomplished you have to be to be able to be considered a deaf wrestler and make it in this business? Because when you're calling matches in the ring, you typically have to do it like speaking into somebody's ear. Mm -hmm. So the amount of times he must have to practice and go over every single time and the way they're going to have to learn things to help him call matches in the ring. I'm very excited to see it. Uh, and I'm very excited for some of our, our friends in here, like a Chris Parrish, like uh, a Carl Carafel, like a Chris Best, people who've been in the ring before to go ahead and give us insight on what it might be like watching a, a deaf wrestler and giving us feedback on what he's doing that you can notice that um, how he wrestles. So I look forward to asking them all these questions as we get to see more and more of him as the weeks go on. Sorry, I need a drink of water there. I apologize. Mm -hmm. We then get to the uh, Joe Coffey versus Nathan Frazier match. And again, Nathan Frazier, one of your boys, I'm going to go ahead and let you take the lead on this one. What you got for me, Asher? <laughs> I didn't get to watch a lot much of this one because the stream wasn't working, but I know the part that really stood out to me was the scary part with the ropes when they bounced off the ropes and that Gallus distraction there. That was uh, really scary to think about. Um, this was one of those that I feel like it could have gone either way. I, I, was, I wasn't sure where, you know, what direction it was going for. But yeah, it was very interesting to see Joy, uh, Joe just win it. I was like, that's really interesting to begin the tournament with this one. And having Nathan, who's been part of the Heritage Cup for the last couple months, be on the losing end for the beginning of the tournament here. But no, I, I feel like that had chemistry. It just felt like the match was really short. I don't know how long it was, so I would like to see that later. But yeah, just that part with the like with the ropes, it was really scary to, to, to see. But other than that, I didn't get to watch much of it, though. Yeah, I thought it was a decent match. Uh, it didn't have anything flashy. I don't think any of these matches are going to have a lot of flashy or special moments in it. They're mm -hmm. going to be kind of basic. They've got to get them in in 10, 12 minutes. Uh, you know we're going to have one or two of these things that are going to go to a draw. You know we're getting one or two of them. If they're giving us that you get one point for a draw, mm -hmm. somebody's getting a point somewhere and losing this tournament because of it. Mm -hmm. um, after week one, we go ahead and we have the, the, the standings. Joe Coffey with one win gets two points. Nathan Frazier with a loss has zero in the Group B section. We get Duke Hudson and Akira Tozawa, I believe, next week. I believe that was announced. And then we have Butch picking up the win, getting two points, and Charlie Dempsey picking up the loss and getting none. We are getting Tyler Bate and Axiom at some point, but it doesn't sound like we're getting that next week. It sounds like next week we're going to get Dabakato versus Tyler Bate. Yep. So maybe we get some other version, maybe it's Axiom and Charlie Dempsey at some point uh, next week. I don't know. We'll we'll have to wait and see. 
because they didn't. They don't. I don't think they gave us a what comes next week this week like we normally get from NXT. Well, they did that. The, the only thing that I saw from my end, at least, because my stream wasn't working that great, uh, mm -hmm. it was a Lee versus Dragon uh, versus Dragon Lee with Dom as a referee for next week. Latarius returning, and then Braun versus Braun for the with the no DQ, and then Tiffany versus the winner of the Fatal Four Way for next week. That's when we were shocked that the match was happening next week. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, when when we when when they started talking about Tiffany Stratton versus the winner, we were like, wait, hold on, wait a minute. So that means that the winner of the match tonight is immediately going to face Tiffany Stratton next week. What in the blue hell is this? Yeah, that was definitely a big surprise to us. Uh, Barry is saying, yeah. didn't they say that some matches are on level up? Uh, they might have. They very well yeah. might have. That would I wouldn't be surprised if they try to put some of those matches on level up. Because they've only got so long, and they have to get three matches uh, a, a piece. So mm -hmm. I think it's going to take them some time if they don't split some of these matches up to a different mm -hmm. um, leeway at some point. They're going to have uh, trouble getting them all in. But if, if they do happen to level up, we'll go ahead and we'll give you an update on them because Asher will let me know, and I will make sure mm -hmm. to watch level up for the first time ever and find out what happens. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I only watch the highlights, but still. I don't even watch those. <laughs> um, and then we have our main event of the night. Uh, no, you forgot about Chase U. Yeah, I tried to forget about Chase U, didn't I? <laughs> um, no, this was the part when uh, Andre is waiting for Thea to get to the class, and then he's like, where's Thea? Where's Thea? And was like, well, I don't know. She never misses a class. Maybe she's late. And he starts talking about Duke being in, in the tournament and he started explaining the rules of the tournament. He's like, yeah, because he's representing Australia. He's like, I, I didn't know you were from Australia. He goes, what well, gave it away is what Duke says. I was like, well, I thought it was New Zealand. <laughs> they keep just talking about the rules. Like, you know, if you get the 12 minutes, you get two points for the pinfall submission, one point for the draw, and then the class is over. And and then Duke is talking to Andre. Thea arrives like, oh, look who made it finally. And he goes, well, you missed the class. Like, you're late at this point. And she's like, well, who cares? And then Duke, I like how he tries to defend her and be like, well, she has a perfect attendance. I think it'll be fine, though. I'm like, not anymore. <laughs> and then she's like, well, I, I'm going to go anyway because I'm going to go hang out. And when they look, JC Jane's at the door frame. So she's, she's going to go hang out with JC Jane. So she's getting poisoned. Oh, she's got a bad influence. <laughs> next thing next thing we're going to see Kaz and Christopher Daniels out there with, with JC Jane is bad influence. No. no. Was it funny? No. Barry, ba Barry will get it. Barry will get that joke. No, it was terrible. <laughs> I thought it was pretty damn good. I wonder if they, if I imagine if they dye her hair, give her pierces or something, make her like look a rebel to like Andre. I think that would be funny. I've, I've, I've had enough of it already. <laughs> but no, but you liked her last week. Just keep going with it. I did. And then, and then this week happened. <laughs> no. No, Thea's already a bad girl, as in she's a bad at wrestling girl. Um, no. I mean, yeah, they're, they're going to turn Thea Hale a, a little bit, and then she's going to eventually turn back to Chase University when she realize, realizes that that life's not for her, and it's going to take them eight months to do this because Lord knows that's what took them for Jensen and Briggs and Kiana and Fallon and all that bullshit, so... That took a year and a half, so this should take at least six to eight months. <laughs> Great. Then we had the main event. This was really fun. I really enjoyed this. But Astrid, as our women's wrestling expert over here, more importantly, after having written the article and then dealt with dealt with trolls all weekend about it, why don't you go <laughs> ahead and talk about one the article and two this main event? I mean, nothing new with the article there, but I just. <sighs> Uh, obviously, the the discussion with All In caused the article to to get bumped up again, to put it like that. So uh, I got a lot of trolls happening. So yeah, a lot of a lot of guys were mansplaining to me how to book a women's match for you know to a woman. But... So so here, this is this is how you do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, let me take notes. <laughs> you should. Um, I, I have great I have great thoughts and ideas, and you should obviously. I mean, look, I'm such a good booker that Tony Khan heard what my idea was and made the match for all out. Like I'm, ju I'm just saying. He <laughs> heard the idea. He heard the idea, and he was like, "Boom, that's going to be the match at all out." Because Ed said so. 
I mean, he's only got a week to book stuff, and he's given most of the talent the week off. So, oh my god! Sorry, uh, women's women's main event. No, what I like about this match is not only the pacing of it because it was very fast paced, and even whether it got ten to fifteen minutes, it felt a lot longer than that. But not only that, but one thing that I liked about this, like the three way even four, four way matches, is like we had, I think almost at every point in the match, it was at least three people in the match. It was very rare to have kind of like that one on one part. Um, I knew that was what we call the Tower of Doom in the corner that I really liked how it ended up uh, happening. Um, yeah, it was like Gigi looked great while she was helping with that part of it too. And it, my favorite part was like towards the end, we're here watching it together. And here we're thinking, oh, shoot, Roxanne's going to make it. She did the pop rocks not once but twice at this point. And then I remember a few minutes beforehand, I told Ed, Kiana's resting just in the corner. She looks like she's dead at this point because she wasn't moving at all. And I go, oh, no, it's Kiana, isn't it? And then Ed goes, no, it's not. And I was like, she's not doing anything right now, which doesn't help my vision. Um, I had this vision for like that I had in my mind for uh, such a long time because I think it was the rumble, if I'm not mistaken. I knew it was one of those matches that Ed was, Edge was in and he wasn't really a part of most of the match and then he ended up coming back and winning it. And then when I see people resting in the corner like that, I just think of that's going to happen. And then here we're thinking, oh no, it's probably going to be Gigi interrupting Roxanne after you know the pop rocks because it kind of looked that sort of way. And then when Roxanne's focused on Gigi, here comes Kiana and just wins it. And then we get the champ facing off against Kiana next week. I was sad. <laughs> I wish we could have seen your reaction when it happened. You did see my reaction. No, but happened. everybody, not just me, everybody else too. No, no, not everybody needs <laughs> to see the pure look of horror and pain when Kiana James wins the match. But the first words out of my, night, my, my mouth when Kiana won was, well, at least we know Tiffany's retaining next week. They're making sure they keep that belt on Tiffany until they go ahead and get Becky Lynch for No Mercy, huh? Mm hmm Uh, sheesh. Barry Monkey's right. All four women were yeah. really good in this match. They, they, this was a great this was a great Gigi was a standout though too in this match. G too. Gigi like did really so good out. in this match. Yeah. We we've we've spent months talking about how Gigi and her lack of lack of chemistry with a lot of the women's division that they've been having her work with. Tonight, especially with Blair and especially with Roxanne, she was on the top of her game. She was looking really, really good. Not only was her timing right, but it felt like she was in the flow of things. And it's it made me go back and think, is is it is the reason why she's looked so bad with some of these matches? Because she's had to slow down to work with some of these other uh, maybe less talented women. Kiana James held her own in this match to an extreme degree. Yes, she spent a, a good portion of this match on the outside not doing anything. That's mm -hmm. fine to Fatal 4 when you have three other people who are carrying the load. Blair Davenport did a fantastic job. Roxanne Perez did a fantastic job. These four girls busted their ass, got the main event, and did a really good job. Was it as good as the all-out, uh, all-in Fatal 4-Way? Probably not. I enjoyed the all-in Fatal 4-Way a lot. Um, but, what? <laughs> Nothing. Why are we so surprised that I enjoyed the all-in Fatal 4-Way? Like, I don't understand Because I'm not expecting you to enjoy anything that has to do with AEW. <laughs> what the it's... talent do in the ring has nothing to do with Tony Khan. I know. Tony, with Tony Khan. With Tony Khan being the dumbest man in the world. I know. By the way, his explanation for why there was only one women's match on this card. Don't get me started. Ast no, Astrid, hold on. I do want you to get started. Um... <laughs> We're just gonna end. We're gonna end. We're gonna end. The, Carmelo Hayes looks at his phone and sees Wesley's promo and goes, "Oh, I gotta nip this stuff in the butt." And he goes ahead and knocks on Shawn Michaels' door and he yeah. walks in. He says, "HBK, we gotta talk about this." So next week we're gonna find out what they talked about. All right, Astrid. <laughs> all uh, all in press conference. Tony Khan is asked directly why there was only one women's match on the card, and he gives the most bullshit answer about pacing. And about needing to make sure you had the most star power on the show. And that apparently they couldn't get the other women across the border to have the show. Go ahead, Astrid. <laughs> uh, well, I first I gotta give a shout out. Lyric, she's from Women's Wrestling Top, but she also has her own YouTube channel. So if you followed her, haven't followed her, please do. She does great content. And I love that 
she i think she, i believe she said she was the only black woman in this like media room or whatever conference if you want to call it and for her to have that moment and to use it to speak up about this it just i felt like it was great and having her like say it's like oh how come we only got one woman smash on the card and it just like his answer it reminded me a lot of triple h's answer at SummerSlam to going around the bush of like yeah but the pacing and yeah, i can't get everybody in the card and i was like i get that but at the same time, you had a two-hour pre-show with two matches that lasted, what, not even 30 minutes between both of them? You could have had, to, like, a little battle royal for a future title shot, something like that. And it just, it's one of those things that it frustrated me so much. And um, I began to tweet about it uh, over the weekend. It was like, I I basically said, congratulations for all in, but still, why only one women's match? Um, and I like that I had a lot of uh, a lot of women supporting me, like Kate from Fightful, and even uh, I I believe her name is on Twitter is like Susanna or Susanna, but uh, we've always had a great connection talking about women's wrestling as well. And I got those little Twitter trolls as I was talking about earlier of like, when you know, women don't belong in wrestling and I'm satisfied with only one match. And I said, like, well, it's like times have changed. One match shouldn't be enough. And especially when they, if you think about it from the standpoint, the paper view was like, what, five, seven hours, maybe more or less between that and the pre-show. And Six, if you count the pre-show. Yeah, so it's like about like between six to seven hours to put it like that. And the woman only had like about 10 minutes out of those, you know, six hours to put it like that. So it was like that. I know it's never going to be equal because you have the male roster is a lot larger than the women's roster. But at the same time, I just think of like there should be some kind of a better balance in that aspect to it. But yeah, so that that made it. People like Kate want to reshare the, the article that I had done in July. I was like, well, it's still relevant to this day. And yeah, I started getting a lot more traction than I thought I would. Um, but yeah, but at the same time, I gained a lot of people that were supporting me uh, through this whole point of like, yeah, I'm like, I want this person, this person, this person to shine, but I don't see them shining every single week. And I go, yeah, then like, I feel like they could have done a blood and guts for the woman. I know Jamie Hader was injured, but they could have done that with the other girls on the roster. Nothing happened there. And then... And no, I think before All In, they already had announced that Ruby was versus Statlander was happening. So I figured that will happen for All Out. But like I said, it was like, you know, when your, your pay-per-view is happening, you didn't plan ahead of time to like have something there and have people travel there. That was, you know, the few things I was like, aside from the women's match, she, the other women on the show were um, Trent's mom that was there and Julia Hart. I think that those are the only other two that were outside of like the women's match. And don't no, get me wrong. Mercedes, Mercedes Monet was shown about 16 times. And Mercedes was shown in every other match except for the women's match, which made no sense to me. I was like, I would have liked if Saria won and had that, you know, that camera point to Mercedes of all people because they're so <laughs> there. And it's like thinking of like that connection they have between each other. It's like, oh, that kind of would tease a future match between them. But they kept showing them like through during the trios match with the acclaims. So I was like, what does she have to do with the acclaims? I don't get it. But yeah, there's so many things that I could like nitpick about basically. But I did over the weekend and ended up hitting a lot of people like hating on me or whatever. But I didn't care. I still spoke up for women's dressing and I will never stop doing either. So there you go. We have our friend Bobby Munson jumping in. Good evening, Bobby Munson. We have Barry Monkey saying there's exciting news. Apparently, apparently Tyrus has left NWA. Yes, he has lost the NWA World's Championship to EC3. It is still too late. It is still fuck the NWA. It is still fuck Billy Pumpkins. Oh, but I will say, though, talking about NWA as well, I know Camille lost the title, but I will say, Camille, what a great champion. 813-day yes. reign. Still impressive. That is amazing. So and it's like congratulations I gotta and to, congratulations uh, Kenzie. to Kenzie Page. Yeah, it's, that was incredible. So it was like, I know I'm, it's bittersweet that the rain had ended, but again, Camille was such a great champion. Yeah, it'll be definitely hard to fill those pictures. Yeah, Camille is not long for the NWA. She's made for bigger and better uh, pastures, mm -hmm. whether it be MLW in the featherweight division, whether it be AEW, whether it be WWE and NXT. I can't wait for her to get the hell out of that cesspool that is the NWA. <laughs> By the way, there are so many fantastic people in the NWA. The cesspool that is the NWA has nothing to do with anybody other than the people running it. Um, and their former world champion who is now supposedly have to retire. So we'll deal with that as it goes. But yes, I was very excited to see that Tyrus had lost the championship. Uh, it is about fucking time, especially after that hateful sit that he had to spew on Fox about uh, a week ago. So, yes, glad he is gone. 
Astrid, where can the wonderful people find you this upcoming week? Well, I'll be over here in Florida trying to cover up from the hurricane that's coming. Yay! <laughs> um, no, I'm um, not sure about Ladies Western Showcase. We'll see about that one. But uh, you can find me mostly on my social media as we have. I still call it Twitter. I'm sorry. Twitter and Blue Skies, Astro Bizarro. Instagram and Thrust, Astro Bizarro 20. And if you go back to my YouTube channel, you'll see episodes that Astro asked, Ladies Western Showcase, and even Taking Over. And on my new vlogs, too, that I've been putting on a weekly basis as well. So a lot of fun stuff happening over there if you haven't subscribed yet. And remember, I'm going to go ahead and put the link in one more time. You can use this link right here. It is now clickable in every single chat. You can use that link to go ahead and see Astrid's affiliate link to the WWEshop.com. So you can go ahead and use that link to go ahead and buy any of your WWE merchandise. You can go ahead and support the family of Bray Wyatt by going ahead and buying some Bray Wyatt merchandise using that link. And a little bit will go to Astrid. We are very excited for her to have this link. It will be posted in the description on the YouTube video for all of those of you watching it afterwards on the YouTubes. You can find me on the X at Ed Fries 12584. I don't need no blue skies. It's raining here and she's got a hurricane. I don't need no threads. I got a nice shirt right here. It's fantastic. It's nice and red. I enjoy it. Um, you can also find all my gaming content on Ed Fries 2002. I'll be playing some more Marvel Snap and doing some more gaming content later on this week. I will also be joined by the one and only Chris Parrish as we continue Wrestle Draft as we are getting extreme. With Extreme Rules this week, we have our Extreme Rules Premium Live event, week 10 of season two. So go ahead and join us for that as I am climbing back up to try to get the top spot again. It's going to be a hard one, but I'm going to get there. Uh, so go ahead and see that. And then I have nothing else this week. I have a nice low, low key week, but in a, in a, in a short oh, yeah. time, I'll oh, have to defend, yeah. I'll have to defend yeah. my YouTube championship that I won in the bot and the video bros, Bobby Munson's channel, as I am now the YouTube trivia champion over there on those Thursday nights. So in a couple of weeks, we'll be going ahead and getting that. We have Barry Monkey saying, I'd rather stab forks <laughs> in my eyes than watch Fox News, so I miss all the excitement. There I is no watch, excitement. I, I don't watch Fox News either. I only <laughs> knew it because Astrid knows how, how big of a fan I am of Tyrus and pointed it out specifically to me. Um, if you want to <laughs> see hateful, terrible, terrible things with people telling him that he'd slap his own children around if they gave, they went around introducing themselves with pronouns, which, by the way, is the worst opinion that you could ever have. If people have pronouns, they should be able to use them if they so choose. So thank you, Tyrus, for being a fucking moron. And thank you, Billy Pumpkins, for thinking that he was great for the wrestling world for so long that you made him one of the most prestigious championships he held that shit and at least now ec3 is a little bit less of mm -hmm. a sentimental prick that i can at least be okay with ec3 holding that title for now yeah. hopefully hopefully in the near future we can have somebody with some the only thing I holding that title i hope with this coming barry doesn't mean that tony khan's bringing in tyrus because no <laughs> i mean i was expecting goldberg at all in so i was disappointed when i didn't get him <laughs> uh, but for things that are happening this week on our local establishment, before we head on out of here, we're going to go ahead and give you the calendar, and then we're going to go ahead and find somebody to rate. We'll see you in about a minute. <laughs>
So those are all the wonderful things. Remember that WWE Payback is this weekend. We will have a preview show probably we're either probably live probably this Friday night. If not, it'll be live Saturday afternoon as we, me and Parrish will go ahead and probably pre-record something on Friday night then to be ready for it to be out on Saturday. But sometime Friday night into Saturday, you will have previews for a uh, WWE Payback. You will also have a post show for AW Payback hosted by our one and only the Chris Parrish will be hosting that show. I unfortunately am not available for the post show this week for Payback, but maybe, maybe Asher will be there. Who knows? And we also apparently may or may not have some all out uh, content. I, I reviewed one AEW show. I'm done for a little while. Don't call me. No more <laughs> AEW for Ed. But for myself, for Asher Bazaar, we're going to, yes, Tyrus better get signed to Mc- No, he can't go to McDonald's. McDonald's is good. Maybe Jack in the Box. I don't have to deal with Jack in the Box. EC3 controlling his own narrative where nobody will see him. It's going so well for him. It is. We're going to go ahead and raid the Allison K. So everybody get ready for that. We will see you all next time. Have a great night. Goodbye.